Case history. Our patient is a female named Callie Smith. She was born September 20th of 2017. Our patient is being admitted for cleft palate reconstruction surgery. Our patient has a complete cleft palate, which is a cleft palate that includes both the hard and soft palate. The patient's father's sister also had a cleft palate malformation at birth. The patient's mother is a woman with epilepsy. She was not aware she was pregnant until the second trimester, and therefore she was taking high doses of sodium valporate, which is an anti-seizure medication, during her first trimester of her pregnancy. Taking sodium valporate while pregnant has been linked to an increased risk of having a baby with minor to major malformations, such as a cleft palate. Speech and language development in children with cleft palate varies drastically. Around 50% of children with cleft palate require speech and language therapy. However, the impact of the cleft on speech is not often clear until the child begins to speak. Communication problems in individuals with cleft palate arise due to two main sources, velopharyngeal dysfunction and dental abnormalities. Velopharyngeal dysfunction, VPD, is one of the most common sources of difficulties in the speech of patients with cleft palate. A VPD occurs in about one-third of patients following a palate repair. Typically, if the child's cleft has impacted their soft palate, then it is likely that they will have a VPD. This dysfunction is caused by the soft palate not being able to close off the nasal cavity, therefore allowing air to escape through the nose. VPD could result in one of the one or more of the following communication errors. Hypernasality, audible and or visible nasal air emission during production of oral consonants, weaker omitted consonants, a reduced mean length of utterance, and compensatory articulation errors. Another main source of communication problems for individuals with cleft palate arise from dental abnormalities. If the cleft extends into the gum range, dental development may be affected. This can cause missing or extra teeth in the area of the cleft, smaller or crooked teeth, or malocclusion. Any of these problems with the patient's teeth can impact articulation of speech sounds. For example, dental abnormalities may cause a lisp type of distortion of dental sounds. They may also cause difficulty producing bilabial sounds, labiodental sounds, and alveolar sounds. Feeding can be very difficult for babies born with a cleft palate. There is a lot of variability in how each type of cleft will affect each infant. During the initial clinical visit with an occupational therapist, babies will receive a feeding assessment. Information, plans, and demonstrations will be put in place in order for the baby to feed. In order to determine treatment for a child with a cleft palate, it is important to determine if the speech difficulty is obligatory or learned. Obligatory speech difficulties are related to atypical anatomy and or structural defects. These speech deviations are not responsive to speech therapy and they will require surgical and or physical manipulations. If the speech deficit is a learned articulation error, for example, compensatory errors, they should be responsive to speech therapy. Objectives of speech therapy are to correct oral placements of misarticulations and to establish an oral pathway for airflow and appropriate blocking of airflow at target locations while producing oral sounds. Speech therapy can be divided into two phases the initial therapy stage, and the later therapy stage. Initial therapy is for eliminating compensatory misarticulations as they have the greatest impact on the child's intelligibility. This can include sounds that a child is stimulable for, nasal or low-pressure consonants when they are produced with a glottal stop, high-pressure consonants that are unintelligible, and anterior consonants, for example, p, b, t, d, and v, given that the child is compensating for posterior placement. Later therapy is for developmental articulation and any phonological errors. Strategies and techniques that can be used are starting with bilabials and then moving towards alveolars. In order to break the glottal patterns, you would utilize a sustained H in order to teach airflow. In addition, you can insert H after stop plosives in order to prevent the glottal use. You can use visual cues such as mirrors, feathers, or diagrams. You can provide verbal cues, or you can provide tactile cues such as touching the neck, plugging the nose, feeling air on the hand, in front of the mouth, etc. In order to understand how our client's complete cleft palate has formed, it is important to first be familiar with the typical development of the palate. 
The roof of the mouth, or palate, consists of a hard and soft portion. In order for it to form correctly, two major components, the primary palate and secondary palates, must first develop. The primary palate is a small structure that forms between weeks 5 and 6 of gestation. It is located between the developing maxilla bones and formed from the medial portions of each developing nasal cavity, which can also be referred to as the intermaxillary segment. A portion of this segment, identified in pink in image D as the primary palate, later becomes a component of the maxilla, or upper jaw, and can be found directly behind an adult's foreign scissors. This video gives an excellent representation of the nasal cavity merging, which is highlighted in green to form the primary palate. The secondary palate, identified in light green in image D, develops between week 6 and 8 of gestation. Initially, standing as a pair, the secondary palatal shelves grow inward from the palatine bones. These bones are extensions of the maxillary processes, which is the maxillary bone in its premature state. Between weeks 9 and 12 of gestation, each secondary palatal shelf will fuse, first with the primary palate and nasal septum, as seen in image E, and later, in week 12, with its pair, resulting in a fully fused secondary palate, as seen in image F. This results in the oral cavity and nasal passage being completely separated. Once these critical preliminary stages of development are complete, the membrane bone, an early component of the maxilla that develops from the primary palate, extends into a portion of the palatine bone to form the hard palate. The hard palate thus includes the primary palate and the anterior portion of the secondary palate, and is identified by the presence of this membrane bone. In contrast, the soft palate is made from the posterior portions of the fused secondary palate and is identified by the absence of this membrane bone. In other words, it is the posterior portion of the secondary palate that extends past the nasal septum and fuses to form both the soft palate and the uvula. Speech and language development in children with cleft palate varies drastically. Around 50% of children with cleft palate require speech and language therapy. However, the impact of the cleft on speech is not often clear until the child begins to speak. Communication problems in individuals with cleft palate arise due to two main sources, velopharyngeal dysfunction and dental abnormalities. Velopharyngeal dysfunction, VPD, is one of the most common sources of difficulties in the speech of patients with cleft palate. A VPD occurs in about one-third of patients following a palate repair. Typically, if the child's cleft has impacted their soft palate, then it is likely that they will have a VPD. This dysfunction is caused by the soft palate not being able to close off the nasal cavity, therefore allowing air to escape through the nose. VPD could result in one of the one or more of the following communication errors. Hypernasality, audible and or visible nasal air emission during production of oral consonants, weaker omitted consonants, a reduced mean length of utterance, and compensatory articulation errors. Another main source of communication problems for individuals with cleft palate arise from dental abnormalities. If the cleft extends into the gum range, dental development may be affected. This can cause missing or extra teeth in the area of the cleft, smaller or crooked teeth, or malocclusion. Any of these problems with the patient's teeth can impact articulation of speech sounds. For example, dental abnormalities may cause a lisp type of distortion of dental sounds. They may also cause difficulty producing bilabial sounds, labiodental sounds, and alveolar sounds. Speech and language development in children with cleft palate varies drastically. Around 50% of children with cleft palate require speech and language therapy. However, the impact of the cleft on speech is not often clear until the child begins to speak. Communication problems in individuals with cleft palate arise due to two main sources, velopharyngeal dysfunction and dental abnormalities. Velopharyngeal dysfunction, VPD, is one of the most common sources of difficulties in the speech of patients with cleft palate. A VPD occurs in about one-third of patients following a palate repair. Typically, if the child's cleft has impacted their soft palate, then it is likely that they will have a VPD. This dysfunction is caused by the soft palate not being able to close off the nasal cavity, therefore allowing air to escape through the nose. VPD could result in one of one or more of the following communication errors. Hypernasality, audible and or visible nasal air emission during production of oral consonants, weaker omitted consonants, a reduced mean length of utterance, and compensatory articulation errors. Another main source of communication problems for individuals with cleft palate arise from dental abnormalities. If the cleft extends into the gum range, dental development may be affected. This can cause missing or extra teeth in the area of the cleft, smaller or crooked teeth, or malocclusion. 
Any of these problems with the patient's teeth can impact articulation of speech sounds. For example, dental abnormalities may cause a lisp type of distortion of dental sounds. They may also cause difficulty producing bilabial sounds, labiodental sounds, and alveolar sounds. Speech and language development in children with cleft palate varies drastically. Around 50% of children with cleft palate require speech and language therapy. However, the impact of the cleft on speech is not often clear until the child begins to speak. Communication problems in individuals with cleft palate arise due to two main sources, velopharyngeal dysfunction and dental abnormalities. Velopharyngeal dysfunction, VPD, is one of the most common sources of difficulties in the